Welcome back to Court Farm for episode 13 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Thanks for joining me again. We're here on Court Farm. It's 10 past 2 in the afternoon. We're at the store because I've got to get the nitrogen done on our field uh, down at Stonebridge Farm. And um, the store have got a new telehandler, uh, telehandler, forklift. So we're using that. We've bought a pallet of fertilizer. What I did to make this pallet lighter was filled up our broadcast fertilizer spreader that we purchased in the last episode i want to get that done now in november one before we go into november two or three uh, i don't know if you'll see me in december we've got a look at contracts and things we're going to be doing into december the other thing i've decided as well what i'm going to do off camera which i've done before is contract work off camera to build money up we are a contracting company and one thing we have got an abundance of is hay baling contracts we can make a lot of money because what I've been doing is keeping the silage bales and I kept the straw bales when we did the straw baling but we can sell those bales and we can make money we might keep some of those hay bales I'll talk about that later on as well um, I might start one of those oh hang on uh, I don't know but there are loads of them so as soon as that's what we're doing KCC is Caleb Cooper contracting we're going to do a load of contracts because I've got to make sure we've got we can keep earning through the winter months we might do some forestry i haven't decided we've got i've got to speak to caleb and see what we're going to do about that to see what they do off season because there must be work they do and um, that being said i just need to load this this was left over from before um and this has just been sat so i've had some real problems which i'm having again now there we go as i say with a couple of these the, the previous pallet I couldn't put onto the trailer at the back and I'm worried this is going to happen again. It kept like it was hooking up to the trailer. It was very strange. Not the pallet, but the actual forklift felt like it was hooking up to the trailer. I need to shove this forward if I can. Right. Yeah, it's, it's odd. It's like the straps are on on the trailer. I don't want to damage anything, but... To give it a real... There we go. Now, drop that. Oh, that's better. It wouldn't, it wouldn't retract the forks when I tried to put it on from the back. So the first pallet I put on from the side. Not that you need to know that. The reason I'm putting that on is because our fertiliser spreader, because we went for a cheaper option, something a bit smaller, something that I could put onto the Massey, um, this only holds 1,650 litres, as you can see bottom right. So we're going to, need to refill that. At least I think we, we should need to refill that because we haven't got any nitrogen on our field at all. So what I'm going to do, I, well, what I'm going to do, what I am doing, I borrowed the small trailer from Court Farm. We put the fertiliser on that. I'll come and grab that with a Land Rover and we'll whiz down. And um, I was, what I should have done was come up in the Puma or one of the others. And I could have put that on the front three point link to get it down to the farm and taken the trailer at the same time. I, I just didn't think. I went to Court Farm, picked up the trailer, drove up here and suddenly thought, you muppet. Anyway, <laughs> so forklift has been used. Happy days, we'll put that back where we found it. And I shall head down to the field and we'll get the uh, nitrogen started. I have an idea as well, because we need to, like I said, we need to get through the winter months. We need to be earning money, so I think we need to diversify as well. Diversify. Uh, I've got a plan. Well, you probably already know from the thumbnail, I would imagine. So I might as well just say it. Apple trees. I was thinking of getting some apple trees put in. So what we're going to do is probably into November 2, we're going to get some apple trees put in. Now, I could go further down the line and look at um, what we could do with those apples and we could do a whole load of production stuff. I think to start off with, what we'll do, we'll get some apple trees put in and um, we'll just get some apples and we can sell the apples. At the end of the day, it's fruit trees. It's another crop, technically. Um, it gives us something we can sell, which kind of makes sense, doesn't it? And, uh, yeah, we'll get onto that in November 2, maybe November 3, depends, like I say, depends when I see you next. I've been thinking a little bit about, when I said about diversifying, about diversification generally, what I'm thinking, I'm going to speak to the guys at Court Farm as well, because obviously we've got this situation where it's Court Farm Country Park, and we're trying to build up and get more animals in there to, obviously when you know people bring their families and stuff, there's more to do. 
I'm thinking about speaking to them about maybe putting in like a little, like some play stuff, like a, not an adventure playground per se, but just some play equipment and stuff for kids. So when people are having picnics and they come and they want to sit around at lunch times or just generally, you know what kids are like, you can take them anywhere and they'll be climbing frames and stuff and they'll make a beeline for the climbing frames. My kids always did, it didn't matter where you were, take them somewhere really exciting. So, oh look, climbing frames, like really? We got a climbing, climbing frame in the park behind where we live. You know, why, <laughs> why have we brought you all this way to this amazing place and you want to play on a climbing frame? But anyway, so yeah, something like that. Also, the, the cattle up there are producing manure. And I'm having to muck them out, which I, I love doing. I love that being part of it. Um, about speaking to them about something to do with the manure. So a, a process, something, what do we do? I'm trying to think what the process was for manure pellets, what other things were needed, or that, whether it was just manure in and pellets out. It can't be that simple. There's got to be more to it than that. It's going to end up being molasses and stuff like that, isn't it? But potentially utilising what they've got to make more profit. Also, I'm thinking as we go through the summer months, what we might do is try and work out a way we can um, simulate revenue because over the summer months up until well the period of time they're open as the country park revenue coming in you know from whatever it might be maybe put in a little cafe or something it might be decorative i don't know but i'm just thinking of different ideas of how we can expand the country park you know uh, we need that open let's see how horrendously fast this uses this In all honesty, not as horrendously fast as I thought it was going to. That's good. I was going to just do a time lapse of this. And I thought, well, no, I'm just again, it's another job I need to do. And yes, this isn't a 42 meter wide spreader. We're not getting through this as fast as I thought we would. That's brilliant. We're still going to need to top up. But it's a nice, cheap alternative. It's not a bad width. It's not overly heavy. But again, it depends what your style of gameplay is. If you want to get everything done as quickly as possible, and I've been at fault for doing that as well. It's that kind of, and, and if you're doing a farming scenario where your farm's growing rapidly and you've got a lot of jobs. When I was on Edgewater, big fields, big equipment, more and more stuff, and you've got a load of jobs you need to get done. You need to get those jobs done as quickly as possible. You need to be more productive, more efficient. I totally understand that. But for what I'm doing here, you reach a, a sort of point you think, okay, well, I don't need to go mad on this because what I'm using will work. And that's what I've said before, a lot of farmers are in the same boat. They don't need to buy massive equipment and stuff because what they're using works well for their situation, their area, their landscape, the horsepower of their vehicles. You know, they don't have to necessarily go bonkers. You know what, we might actually, I'm just trying to think, try and get the light behind me so we can see a little bit better. There we go. A bit more. I'm just trying to, well, I don't know if we're going to get away with this, you know. I was hoping we might. I mean, it's not a massive field, we can see that, but. No, it's going to be the tiniest amount, isn't it? I'm not being particularly effective with that. Uh, so I'm talking and not looking at my GPS. I don't know though. I don't know. We might be alright. Oh, that's staggeringly good. I thought I'd have to refill. Well, it doesn't hurt. I can go and grab the fertiliser and bring it back to the farm anyway. Just looking bottom left. Missed a little bit here and there. Try and find a couple of little bits bottom left I'm looking at. Right there. I think I missed a bit over here. I'm wearing my glasses. That's why I can see that really small bottom left. <laughs> Normally, not so much. There we go. And then there was a bit. Where was it? Right over there, I think I missed on the edge. Anyway, brilliant stuff. We've still got some left. I'm going to go to the store with the Land Rover, pick up the trailer, bring it back. Oh, hang on a minute. I've got, oh, yeah, we've got the, the uh, 
forks on the front loader for the class. So I was thinking, I'm going to get those pallets off there. It will be all right. There we go. And we are job done. That just needs rolling now. I'll use the roll that I've used before. There's a couple that I've picked. If you're new to, the, to this this Let's Play, whatever I'm doing, um, it was under... Well, it's under rollers. And there was a couple. There was um, that one there or that one there. I think I used that one as well at one point, the PW, the Gutler. But that one there, the Lizard PB5032, at six metres wide, and you can switch it between Smooth Toothed or Cambridge. And it's cheap as chips to rent. So, and it's six metres wide, it does the job. So I'll probably whiz up the store, grab one of those. And I will see you into November 2 or November 3. And we'll start getting these apple trees in. Now I'm going to say this is going to be a shorter episode today. It is Saturday that I'm recording this, Saturday morning. So I wanted to get some jobs done. Uh, but I've got some... <laughs> this is going to sound... No, it's, it's... I'm doing manly stuff. I'm being a man. I've got a load of wood to chop up, actually. <laughs> I've got some wood to chop and some stuff to do for the uh, for the wood burning stove. I keep thinking, I keep putting it off, and my pile inside is dwindling, and my wood pile outside, I've got a little wood store, that's dwindling. So I need to prepare some more. You can buy bags of kindling and stuff like that, but I prefer mine to be a little bit smaller. So when I do my fire preparation, I go from sort of pencil lead size to pencil size to finger size then it's sort of wrist size and then sort of arm is the sizes I kind of work on for starting with my kindling and everything like that if I'm doing a fire out outside like a bushcrafty type fire birch bark works really well um, sometimes dried moss if you can get some dried moss put it in your pocket let it dry out there's all different ways of doing it or you can use fire lighters or you can use matches or you can you know, there's all sorts of ways you can do it but um yeah, so I've got some of that to do, but I think I need to go and buy some more. And um, I've got some chores to do. When I said about builders, um, one of the plaster walls, or the plaster in our bathroom, we've got, we're sort of in, say, mid-renovation. The renovation's been going on about two years <laughs> in our bathroom. Um, and one of the walls, the plaster, our, our house is turn of the century, and it's... Um, it, the streets around where I live were built and owned by Benskin Brewery and Benskin Brewery was a massive huge brewery in Watford I might have to do that sometime go down to the um, Watford Museum do a walk and talk and go down there because um, all the history of Watford and ask them if they mind me recording in there because they've got a map and pictures you can find them online um, but Benskin's brewery was huge a little bit like Croxley but about the paper mill when I said about the paper mill had its own train and that Benskin's Brewery was colossal, absolutely massive. So they built loads and loads of housing for their for the staff, for the people that worked there. I might as well do this while we're going. And um, where did I have this parked up? Just stick it in the phone. Grab the Land Rover. We'll whiz up. So the house I live in is a terraced house, turn of the century, about 1900. I'm sure that's when our houses were built. Um, so the problem we've got at the moment. Where am I going? Is before we bought our house, some work had been done to it, um, a little bit cowboy-ish to say the least. Um, it had been rewired, but it was rewired a long time ago, and we probably need to do some more rewiring um, to update a load of systems and things in the house. But what I have found is some of the plaster on some of the walls has blown, so it's proper old lath and plaster. It's um, yeah, thin boards with the plaster sort of smushed between them. Um, but the problem I have with hanging things, putting shelves up and stuff like that, is the plaster is about an inch thick, inch and a half thick. <laughs> and the problem is where the plaster is very old, it's very crumbly, very brittle. So to get through the plaster to the brickwork um, can be horrendous. So putting, like I say, putting up things like shelves and uh, anything like that is awful. Pictures, you know, and I found in two or three places the um, the plaster's blown from the wall, which means it's separated from the lath, so the plaster is lifted, and a lot of it's behind wallpaper, so it's fine. But in the bathroom, because we started stripping the wallpaper and stuff, because we needed to redo it, I need to re I need to pull the entire ceiling down, because we've got a real problem with damp up in the bathroom. 
and the guy that came to have a look, my friend down the road, Andre, who's a builder, came to have a look for me, and he said, you might find you haven't got any insulation in the roof. Um, so what you need to do, because the plaster, you know, it's a bit, well, it's awful. He said, you need to pull down the ceiling, see if there's insulation up there. You also need to check, because we had a water leak way, way back in the roof. We had the, the roof fixed, um, sort of the covering of the roof we had fixed. But he said, if you had water ingress and any of your uh, roof joists are rotten, you may have to have a completely new roof on the bathroom. Um, now, I'm terrified of heights. I, I can't, because I thought, oh, I'll buy the, lim the lumber and timber. And, but the problem is price of all that's gone through the roof as well. Um, so I've got to pull all that plaster down. But again, it's that thing of, I, I can either pay someone to do it, which is not going to be cheap, or I'll do it myself. If I do it myself, while I'm doing that, I'm not making videos. If I'm not making videos, I'm not earning money. So you get into that spiral. That thing of, if I'm earning money to pay a builder, I might as well do it myself. So it's a weird thing, isn't it? Um, and then one of the girls the other day came out of the bathroom, slammed the bathroom door, and there was a strange noise. Oh, that's heavy than I thought it was going to be. Which means my headlights are now pointing up in the air, which means I'm going to blind oncoming traffic. Whoa. Yeah, there was a strange noise. When I went into the bathroom, the plaster to the side of the door um, has just come off the wall. It's just, there was a pile of plaster and plaster dust and stuff everywhere, um, all over the floor, all over the place. It hasn't all come off the wall, but most of it. So I've now got to tidy all that up. I've got to get the rest of the plaster off the wall back to the brickwork. Um, and I've now got to look at, yeah, I just need to look at options. It's just one of those situations, isn't it? It's like anybody, you know, any situation you find yourself in, um, your finances only go so far, and, you know, I don't want to take out a loan to get the building work done. I keep hoping for a lottery win, you never know. <laughs> Be nice, wouldn't it? Um, to get it all done, but, yeah, so it's just, it's picking things off in order. And I said it before, much as I love the van, uh, and we bought the van last year and I love it and we needed a new vehicle our old, our old one was 17 years old in it we needed a new car um, but I do have days this is quite an admission Mississippi is not very happy with me because I've said this a few times now it's probably I don't know if I've mentioned it before it's probably my biggest regret at the moment was buying the van I love it it's awesome and I rave about it and we've got all the cooking stuff in the back. We've got the slide pod, and it's got the it's the day van with the bed, and and it's awesome. And I absolutely love it. And I love having adaptive cruise control, and it's comfortable, and it's economical, and it's brilliant. But factoring that into bills and the fact that everything's gone through the roof recently, um, I've done that thing where you you risk your your monthly outgoings exceeding your income. You know. It's all well and good when everything's going great, when everything's rosy and you've got spare money and you're thinking, that's also say spare money, you know what I mean? You know, when you've got a bit of money you can save and you think, well, if we're saving this money, we could buy, a, you know, we could get a new car. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of working out how do I finance everything? We need a completely new kitchen. Again, that's going to be, that's got to be two, three years down the line. That's going to be a long way off, that is. Whoa, this is heavy. This does not want to slow down. Anyway, you don't need to hear my woes. You don't. You don't ch tune in to listen to my woes and problems. You want to see firemen? There's me saying this was going to be a short episode, and I'm going to waffle on, and it's going to be another 50-minute job. Um, what my plan is as we move into tomorrow, I'm probably going to roll, and then we'll get the apple trees sorted out, and that'll be it. Because I say I've got I've got stuff I've got to do today. Um, we were invited into London. My kids are all going to London. Uh, it was Celia G's birthday in uh, in June, and they were in LA. All my kids had all gone out to LA. I mentioned this before. They all went out to LA, and it was her birthday while they were away. Um, but it was quite hot, and she hadn't been feeling very well. And on the day of her birthday, they didn't really do anything. So the plan was, when they came back from LA, they were going to do something for her birthday, which is lovely. It never really happened. Um, She's got a new boyfriend, and he lives the other side of London, so my kids, well, everyone was going into London to meet up for dinner, to meet the new boyfriend, and, you know, all very lovely. Well, myself and Mrs. CDP aren't going. My kids are all going. We were invited, but we, we, yeah, we're not going. But, um, 
Yeah, I don't. I don't I'm just, just obviously just feeling very chatty today. I'll be honest. Percentage day. I'm down at a 60 today. I don't know if you can tell by my voice. I'm feeling a little bit low. I don't know why. Just a little bit. Um, yeah, struggling a bit today. Feel like I'm on the verge of a breakdown. It's not good.
Look at that. Rainbow. That's made me smile. That's nice. That's, <laughs> that's really good. I wasn't expecting that. Sorry about Sorry about before. Um, it's weird because sometimes it's not, you know, when I talk about mental health and all that kind of stuff normally, it's, it's good to talk and it's good to get things out there. And like I've always said this when I'm doing videos, I feel like I'm talking to friends, I'm talking to people, you know, it, it's a... It's good to talk. That, that, that's, that used to be, was that BT? Was that a British Telecom advert years ago? Anyway, as you've seen, rolling's done out on that field. I've put some bales in. We need to go up to Court Farm and do the mucking out for them. But first things first, that, that's, that's brilliant. You know what? I don't know if that will come across on the thumbnail. I hope so. This plot of land we own. This is where we're going to put the uh, apple trees on. So you know what? I'm going to get that done. I don't know where we're going to put on, actually. I haven't done any of that, that baling yet, the, the hay baling I've taken on. Um, oh, but the um, the sugar beating is done. I, I was fiddling around doing various different things. So the sugar beating is done. I'll show you in a little while. In the shed, we've got... I did take a thumbnail. Is it 30,000 litres? We've got a fair bit. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get the apple trees in. We're going get to get them watered. Um... And then I'm going to whiz up and I'll, I'll crack on with mucking out, but um, yeah, so bear with me a second. There we go, we're in. We've got five. We're going to need some water. I'm just, I'm ho it's one of those weird situations now, I'm hoping the rain doesn't stop because I don't want that, that rainbow is perfect. I've got the apple trees here, I want to get some water in them, get some apples on them. I'm assuming they'll grow this time of year. Uh, we have got the water tank from Court Farm here, actually. If I grab the tractor and... Oh, I can show you the sugar bit while we're down there as well. That's left over, 30,000 litres. So we can sell that. We have, we have got a few bits we can sell if we need to. I keep defaulting to this tractor. I mean, it's small. It's, it's I say it's nimble, but it's smaller than usually. I don't need, necessarily need to use the Puma for doing... Um, for moving a water tank around, you know. I probably should have put that fertiliser tank indoors because that's still got some fertiliser in it. That should probably be inside. I had this before. Where is it? Here, isn't it? There we go. I don't actually know if there's any water in it. A thousand litres. We do have a water trough just here. So let's top it up. When I come back through as well, I'll put some more in the trough for the cows as well. I mean, to be fair, it's pouring me rain, it will sort of fill up anyway, but... Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. When I was putting the silage in, um, thank you to, for Tiago for messaging me. Um, my good friend Farmer Cop put up a video yesterday regarding cows and feed, and he's been doing some testing and stuff. Um, Go and check out that video because it's fascinating. There's a lot of information and there's a lot of um, spreadsheet stuff and facts and figures and um, he kind of did a bit of a deep dive into how long to keep the cows, when's the best time to sell them, productivity, different feeds, what feeds are more productive and will, will earn you more money and factoring in all the costs and stuff like that. And what was fascinating, and I kind of found it, I mean, I found it on here, the silaging, if we go into our animals, and we go down to our cows, and I said this before, total mix ration 100%, hay 60%, grass 40%, silage 90%, and that's effectiveness, right? Which should affect your productivity. Grass, absolutely. I think it came out on Farmer Cop's video, that grass just don't bother, it's just it's a complete waste of time. They won't reproduce, they don't produce milk, they don't, you know, and the, the cows, the beef ones won't do anything. But he found the difference between total mix ration and hay was negligible. Even putting just hay in at 60% effectiveness still gave you 100% productivity. Now, it gave him a little bit less, was it milk? And a little bit less on the price, I think it was, for your beef. But you were saving so much in total mix ration, all the other things you had to put in... Hay came out head and shoulders above. So go check out the video. It's it's well worth a watch. Um, it's those kind of things. You just take it as read that, well, yeah, this is how this works, isn't it? This is the way... Oh, no, have we lost it? No, it's kind of still there. 
Have we lost it? Have I lost it? I know I've lost it. There we go. That took more than I was expecting. Which is funny because I did the mod review on those and I couldn't remember how much they took. We need a water pipe just out here. Right, I need to put some more... Um, did that put any apples on there? I think it's the time of year. Oh, yeah, there are some on there, look. You can see them. Are they on these ones? Oh, they are on these ones as well. And then we'll see how we go with apples, with five apple trees. How much, how many apples? Yeah, we need a different water source, don't we? I need a, I need a, we need a standpipe or something over there. I mean, it's not far to come, but I'm going to have to keep opening and closing the gates and backwards and forwards, unless I do the side gate. You know what, I'll do the side gate next time round. That way I can come straight in from the side and, uh, we'll be good. Again, realistically, that's what I'm saying before. If your farmer's got a water source that you use, it might be high volume, it might fill things up quicker, it might be the only water source you've got, uh, whether it be a standpipe, whether it be whatever it is, you know. Um, just because you're having to tank stuff a little way to fill things up, you don't then suddenly say, right, we need a new water point here. You, you use the water point you've got on your farm, don't you? I mean, that's kind of, it is the way it is. Yeah, we use the side gate. The cows don't tend to come out this far, so we'll come backwards and forwards out of here. Avoiding the traffic. Of course, it would be busy as soon as I decide to pull out. And we'll see what happens. But like I say, we are diversifying, so we should get some apples off of these. If any of them just take them to sell them, that's fine. Just thinking of all the various different uh, phrases and strap lines for apples. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, apple of my eye. Trying to think of any others. <laughs> the big apple, of course. Nope, oh, haven't gone tight enough. Sorry. And with that, that's where I'm going to leave you. Like I said, it's a little bit shorter today, maybe. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're still sticking with it, if you're still with me on this one, thank you very much for sticking with me. I really do appreciate it. If you have, if you do, if you are, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest, whatever you should choose to do. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>